My name is Francis Fengsang, and I'm an attorney with Margaret Wong & Associates. Uh, I'm here today with one of our clients who is willing to speak with us about his experience with DACA, or Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. To respect his privacy, uh, we're going to use a fictitious name, and he's going to be interviewed off camera. Victor has approved DACA, and he's willing to be interviewed today to express his thoughts uh, in light of the president's announcement yesterday. Thank you for being with us here, Victor. Thanks for having me. Right. Please tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm 21 years old. I'm a Hispanic dreamer. I graduated from high school in 2013 from the Cleveland Public School. I've also had the privileges of going to uh, study at uh, two different universities for summer programs and stuff. Why don't you tell me about your DACA story? So I came, I came to the to the United States at the age of uh, three years old, I believe. Um, my dad brought us over. It was me, my, my older brother, and my mother at the time, back in 1998. Fortunately, my mother passed away shortly afterwards coming. Mm -hmm. And so my dad had to raise us as a single parent. Eventually we moved, we made the hard decision to move to Cleveland, Ohio. And that was, I believe, about a good 10 years ago we came. We came, I was in the sixth grade. My brother was the one that really start, started kicking things off because he was in, he attended the same high school that I did and he was in at the time what is called high tech, where uh, high school students can take uh, college college classes through Tri-C and through the Cleveland Public School Partnership. And in one of them classes, I guess, uh, Mrs. Wong was given a, a lecture and one of his professors decided to tell my brother to attend, to attend the le lecture and see what she had to say, you know, because everybody knew about his situation. He was a bright, uh, a bright young man, but the chance of him going to school was looking very slim, you know. Soon afterwards, he, she, she was uh, in contact with our family and was uh, back and forth with my father, opening a case with him, opening a case with my, my older brother and I. A year afterwards, that's when my brother and I was uh, were given the, the DACA uh, approval. And when was that? When did you get your DACA approved? So President Obama uh, in 2012, um, I believe we started the process right away, but it's not like day and night where we get, we, we send out the paperwork and boom, you get approval. It's not like, it's not like applying to a new job because you have to deal with the federal government. So it's, it's not as easy as, as um, people make it seem. So I, I believe we started the process right away and I didn't get approved until um, a year afterwards in May of 2013. I was actually about to graduate high school. It was one week before I graduated high school and I, I got my work permit and I got my social. Okay. And so how's DACA helped you? Well, DACA really has helped um, in tremendous ways, you know, uh, before my family and I were living in the shadows, you know. Uh, luckily for me, I was still in school. High school is only four years, you know, four years go by like that. I knew about my situation. I wasn't legal here uh, for the longest because uh, my brother was in the same boat as me. So I didn't want to get my hopes up or anything, like apply to college and then have them be like, oh, well, you need your papers, you need to have this. And so I just avoided that whole headache and stuff. And then when I get my, then I get approval and stuff, it's like the whole different world opened up to me. You know, I'm able to, I was able to get a driver's license. I was able to uh, find a legal job that's gonna pay good. You know, I'm not gonna have to rely on something that's under the table that's some hard labor stuff that was probably what I was gonna have to do to make ends meet. You know, so DACA has really helped out. Well, have you started working or have you kept going to school, continue your education? 
Currently, I work for one of the biggest uh, Northeast Ohio car dealerships where I worked in the marketing field. I chose not to get a higher education, but if I was to do it, um, I would probably go for like business and marketing and stuff like that. Okay. So there's a lot of story being thrown around about DACA right now. So why don't you tell me some myths about DACA? Um, some of the main myths that you hear is that if you get DACA, that um, you have the same rights as any American uh, citizen or anybody with a green card, which is it's not it's not true, you know. No. Um, yeah, we can go to school, but you still have to you still have to pay out of pocket because you can't get federal aid, you know. Another thing is they think that you're allowed to vote, which is not true. I'm pretty sure if it was allowed to vote, then none of this would be happening right now, you know. So what were your thoughts when you first heard that DACA was being rescinded? Well, to be honest, the president, he, he didn't really hire, hire his true self, you know. He came out when he started his campaign attacking uh, Mexicans and calling calling people out their names and stuff, and uh, recently pardoning the sheriff for all the awful things that he's done towards Hispanics, you know. Even a month ago, saying that uh, white supremacy groups where some of the people attending them protests were many fine people, you know, things like that, it's not really surprising, you know. And when President Obama uh, passed DACA, he, he did say it was temporary. So he never said it was going to be permanent, that this was going to here to stay. So I knew that the day would come where this would either uh, go or get, uh, it would lead to something else. So I wasn't really sad or anything. Well, he's done it now. So now, now we got to fight. Now we got to keep our heads up and keep a uh, Hope, hope that Congress uh, do the right thing. Well, do you have any questions for me? You asked me if I was sad, I mean, how I felt, you know, and a lot of people I've, I've, in the previous uh, days or so, like I've seen that they're sad, they're crying and stuff, but I wasn't really sad or anything, um, mainly because I got uh, Mrs. Wong on my side. So as long as, as long as you tell me to not to not to be worried or not to be yeah not to be worried then I should be okay so I guess my question is should I, should I be worried you know now that the president has rescinded DACA it's up to Congress to pass some legislation to help people like you with DACA to stay here either in the same status or have some sort of permanent status here and we're hopeful that that's going to happen in the next six months because. There have already been a few bills that have been proposed to try to help these DACA children. So what I would say is I'm hopeful that something's going to get done in the next six months. And if it doesn't, we'll find some other way to help you because that's what we do. Okay? Okay. All right. Well, thanks for being with us here today. Thanks for having me.